You see, all of us to a certain extent have a little cowardice in us, okay? And it stems just from being afraid. We're afraid of persecution. We're afraid of criticisms. We're afraid of, you know, the homos might come and well, what are they going to do if they protest outside their, our church or whatever? Well, what will they do if they kill, what if they do if they kill us? Well, this is what's going to happen if anybody kills you. You go to heaven. <laughs> that's it. I mean, is that, that's like the best thing that can happen to you. Well, I'm just afraid of dying. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Right. Death is not the same for us as it is for an unsaved person. You see, an unsaved person, when they die, the Bible says that they lift up their eyes in hell. Right. Being in torments day and night. There is no rest for the wicked, okay, when they go to hell. Whereas to us, when we die, yeah, there'll probably be like a little sliver of pain. But guess what? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. You know? And what do you do to a man who's not afraid to die? You see, but when we talk like that and when we exemplify that, we allow others who are possibly a, a little bit fearful of persecutions to wax bold in the Lord. Amen. And what happens when someone waxes bold in the Lord? They start standing up for right. They start standing for the truth. They start preaching the word of God like it needs to be preached. Why? Because they're not afraid of anybody. Amen. Okay? They start standing up against the enemies of God. They start preaching against the things that need to be preached against. And what does that do? That causes for others to be confident in the Lord and saying, look, I'm afraid, but I'm not afraid anymore. I want to stand for truth as well. That's the purpose of enduring afflictions. Look at Philippians 1.12. But I would, you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds, his, his afflictions, his imprisonment in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all the places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without what? Fear. You see, they're like, Paul, man, Paul went to jail. And they're like, let's get up and start preaching too. Because there's something within us that obviously naturally we're afraid. But you know what? As soon as you light a fire under us, as soon as you get the right example out there, you know what that does? That lights a fire under your hinder parts. And you start getting bold for the Lord. You see, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion, the Bible says. And the lion turneth away not from any, the Bible tells us. You know, God expects us to be like lions. To be bold. Okay, that's why it's important that we endure afflictions because there's people who are listening to us out there. There's people who are watching us. And guess what? They like our preaching, but guess what? They're afraid. Yeah. They're scared of the persecution. They're afraid. Well, what's going to happen if they find out? Well, you know what's going to happen? You're going to wax bold in the Lord. Amen. And it, just put it this way. Anytime there's fear in your heart regarding anything, that means the devil's trying to discourage you from doing something that could potentially change your life and the lives of those around you. That means you probably have the potential to do something great for God. But you know what he does? He doesn't send temptation. He sends fear in your heart. Because fear can debilitate you. It can paralyze you. It can keep you from doing works for God. And you know what? The worst thing for a Christian to do is, is look back 20 years later and say, man, I wonder what it would have been like if I would have just fill in the blank. That's the worst place to be in. Better to step out in faith. Have no fear. Be bold, confident in the Lord. Have faith that God can do it. And look back in 20 years and say, I'm thankful that 20 years ago I made that decision. Amen. To give it all to the Lord. To stand for righteousness. To preach hard. And let the chips fall where they may. Amen. But what if? Well, you know what if? God will deliver you out of all those things. Yeah. You know what typically God doesn't deliver? is cowards. He doesn't deliver them. Okay? And you see that multiple times in the Bible. Where people use their own understanding and their own knowledge, and they try to evade persecution. They try to evade afflictions and trials. And guess what happens to them? They end up dying anyways. <laughs> Look, I don't want to die. And the only reason I don't want to die is because I want to do more for the Lord. But in God's economy, the way you do that is by standing for righteousness regardless of what happens. Okay.